Good morning, and welcome to my new YouTube studio once again. Also set up in the living room of my apartment in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. On the table today, I've got an engine that I really had a hard time, actually it was impossible for me to turn down purchasing, and as you can see, it is a Sato engine. This is actually a Sato 150S that I believe is the same vintage as the one I purchased probably back in 1997. Uh, actually a little bit older than that. There were several reasons why I purchased this engine. I really wasn't planning on making a purchase of another engine. Um, but there were three factors that came into play when I saw this engine online. And as you can tell by the title of the video, I'll get to one of those factors here real quick. First of all is the Sato 150S. Even though the placard is missing, this is the 150S, the very first edition, I believe, because that's when they were all black with the silver rockers. So I love that version anyway, because that was exactly like the first one I had, and I think it was 90, maybe 97 or so. The engine came out in 1999, the very first iteration production release of the Sato FA-150S in this form factor came out in 1994. So there were several things. A, the price. It was very, very reasonably priced for a 150. And it was the style I liked, and that was also verified by this type of exhaust. I'm assuming here, I'm making an assumption that everything here, with the exception of the prop nuts, because that's not original, is original to the engine. So first of all, I had to make that assumption because I really couldn't, you know, the owner didn't know much about it. So aside from those two things, I'm assuming that this is all original. And if that's original, if this is the case, this was the style exhaust that came with these engines. The other thing was, there was a picture of the top right lug <laughs> on the ad, and I zoomed in and I was like, freaking A! And that's exactly why this video is titled that, because I bought it under the assumption that, that looked like an A. And as you can see in this picture that I was able to take with my camera, or my phone camera, it is an A. I believe that this is probably perhaps one of the first A letter designation engines of, from Sato that I've ever had. So that was kind of exciting. And that also means, is, as far as I understand how their production lettering process goes, I believe that could mean that this is a 1994 engine. Now the bad news is with this engine was, it's not new in box, which obviously, um, but it has very low compression and that was stated in the ad so this is one of one of those things where you get this you get this engine or I get this engine and I have a hard time waiting for the video shooting the video to actually do the initial inspection because it takes quite a bit of effort to set this studio up now back when I lived in Florida and I had my room set up um, all I had to do was turn on the light and boom, I'm ready to go. Here I've got a whole bunch of different stuff to set up, so waiting for the day or the time of the week where I could actually film a video like this was a little difficult. So I have done a few things to this engine already, but we are going to look inside this engine. Now, what I have done was, when I first got it, I rotated it over. I was like, sure, it has very little compression. Actually, it's got a little bit more now, but it had none. So what I did was I took the rocker covers off, which I can probably go ahead and just start doing now and check to see if the rocker arms moved and they actually were both moving and I was like because the ad the fellow I I, um, I made an offer it was listed at a price and then I made an offer that was lower and it was accepted so I was like hmm that usually is not necessarily a good sign but as you can see here that's black going to be hard to tell. I have some theories about this engine. It doesn't look super dirty. The bearings don't feel super bad like they're original. So I have a theory that this engine has been serviced before. And Let me take this cover off and I'll show you why. One of the reasons why I think that. If you can look at this this has the telltale signs of having had a lot of carbon build up on it 
and then being sanded down or polished or attempted to get cleaned off. And plus it's also got this aftermarket larger fuel breather or air breather nipple on there. So this engine is, this muffler at least, this exhaust has been uh, polished up. So this had a lot of carbon on it. So that's one thing that makes me think that, well, this engine's been uh, played with quite a bit. <coughs> Hopefully you can see this, I don't know. <coughs> Both rocker arms move freely, valves move up and down freely. Now, so the other thing I did was I, I put oil on this thing and I took the glow plug out and I put some oil in there and I heated it up. I heated it up quite a bit to try to see if I could get some compression. Um, what ended up happening is I put oil throughout this engine, I heated it up, and I found that and the, the fellow that sold it said he thought it was an exhaust leak, or exhaust valve was the reason for the lack of compression. But I'm holding my thumb over this exhaust port, and I actually have really good compression on the exhaust stroke. So that isn't the source of it. The source of the lack of compression, unfortunately, is on the intake valve side, the intake side and it does move so what I also did to try to verify some of this was I put the piston at top dead center and the first thing I thought was I'll feel the valve lash well I can feel movement so I don't think the lash is set too tight causing a lack of compression which would be a nice thing it'd be nice if that was all that it was especially on the intake side but I'm feeling some play there, so I don't think too tight a valve lash is the reason for the lack of compression. And because of the fact that I can get compression, or at least feel that here on the exhaust side, also tells me that it's not a ring that's causing the problem. So, let me put my finger over the intake side. Nothing, nothing whatsoever there. So that's a problem. And why is that a problem? Well, the problem with that is that it could mean that we've got a damaged valve or a damaged valve seat because you're not going to have carbon buildup on the intake valve. So I'm going to open this engine up. And the other thing I did earlier today, let me pause right here for a moment. Okay, the other thing I did was I broke free all of the fasteners already to off camera because I didn't want to get into a situation in my living room where because I didn't bring oil and I didn't bring solvents I didn't bring my parts cleaner I didn't bring any of that kind of stuff in here I'm not ever gonna do that um, so I broke free all the fasteners out in the garage when I had the heat gun so I could make sure that I wasn't gonna have any real issues um, with that so let's start by just looking in this rear cover, see if we can get this thing off. I didn't take any fasteners out, I simply broke them free. Just to make sure I wasn't going to have any real gotchas here with this thing, because I really want to get this engine running, however, I don't want to go spending any more money on it other than, you know, bearings. It's probably going to need bearings. So here, let's look inside here. I've got a flashlight here. That looks pretty gnarly in there. But a lot of that gnarliness might be because of the oil I put in here. The other thing I did in trying to get compression back was I strapped this onto my stand and I spun it over with the uh, electric starter and that didn't, I heated it up, oiled it, spun it over with the electric starter, usually that's another good thing you can try to get compression back, that didn't work either. So that was a, kind of sucked. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead and pop this valves off and this was also one of those things I made sure of these pins here I've talked about these rocker arm pins in videos before and that and for those that are newer 
you have to have a screwdriver that fits this slot precisely. And I do mean precisely because if you can't get these pins out, it's under pressure. If you can't get these pins out, you're not getting the rocker arm off. And when I say precisely, let's see if this thing will focus on here. It's got to be the proper width and thickness to really get in there because these can get wallowed out really easily. So here's our rocker arm. Push rod. Now this does have some exhaust, some residue on the stem that's making that a little bit sticky. So that's going to have to come down. Now I'm not going to be dropping the valves on camera because I don't have the I didn't go down and find what the uh, size ignition wrench is that I need to do that. I don't have that on hand. I have to go back and find that. I don't think I've got that all the way out. There we go. See, this one doesn't have any stickiness but clearly isn't right either so like I said I've already broke through broke these fasteners free so I can pop this head off here I don't know that I'm going to actually be able to tell whether there's, obviously I don't think I'm going to be able to tell if there's damage to the valve seat until I remove the valve, but I did at least want to take this thing down just to the head. I'm not going to take anything else. Now the other thing I did note that was really odd that I've never noticed before, and I consulted with my friend Harvey about this also, I've never seen this nor have I ever really done this test before, but when I was trying to check for the compression, while the rear cover was on, I had this fuel tube on here, and I was blowing into the crankcase from the fuel tube. Why I decided to do that, I'm not really sure why I, done, I did that. I'm not even sure if I've ever done that before. But what I felt was a lot of air leakage, a lot of air coming out, and I isolated the air to coming out, it feels like it's coming out from the timing cover. Now, I looked around, it's black, I had a flashlight, I was looking around to see if there's a hole in the crankcase. And there's grime there, I haven't taken a toothbrush, but I don't think that's a hole, but it felt to me like it was right at the ceiling area between the cover, timing case cover, and the, and the crankcase. So I started thinking, well, that was also another clue that told me that somebody's been in here because I went and grabbed one of my new and bought that Sato FA65 Gold Knight new and box engine and did the same test with it and I didn't get any airflow coming out or moving at all. It was just like <laughs> you just try to blow in there was just completely nothing nothing was going. So that tells me that maybe either the gasket is not present or the mating surfaces are damaged. Now, I asked Harvey, I don't think that will affect the way the ability for the engine to run because the crankcase is not the combustion chamber and that's not uh, necessary to have that sealed, I don't believe, for operation. But Here we go. Let's look at the top of the piston too because this will give us a clue as to whether this thing was serviced fairly recently and then they found that it just didn't have compression. I mean look, I shouldn't be able to pull this in and out that easily if it had compression. Uh, let's see here. Okay, wow. That's kind of nasty looking. 
just like I suspected. The ring is free and not damaged. If someone was in here and serviced this engine, or cleaned it, they didn't do a very good job because it's not clean. But I thought I just heard that fall out. I don't have my punch set <coughs> with me either, so I'm not going to pull that pin out. I just it moves freely. I'm not worried about that. I just really want to check the condition down here. I think I tried doing this just a few weeks ago and it wasn't real successful. Now that's pretty gnarly looking in there. Let me shove this rag up in there and. Pretty gross looking in there. Oh, let's let's do this. Now that's odd. Okay, I was just let's see if I can find a clean part of this. <laughs> I was just blowing into the bottom of the head to see where the air leak would, was from and in this instance I felt the leak on the exhaust side so I shoved my finger up in there and I felt it pop back up. Now that is strictly a result of carbon buildup on the valve stem. Oh, damn. Try this again. Okay, so I felt a little bit of leakage on both. Clearly, the uh, exhaust one is clearly just a matter of it needing to be pulled, dropped, and cleaned. Let me see if I can get it to seal, but I also felt a little bit of leakage on the intake side. Yep. Why? I don't know. Maybe there's debris from the combustion chamber up under the, under the valve. And that could be all it is. We can always hope. But this is all going to go into the, well, the head anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the valves off camera, see if I can't do the same test, clean them up, inspect the seats, see if uh, see if that resolves the compression issue. If that resolves the compression issue, I'm going to run this engine. Does it need bearings? Yeah, probably. They don't sound horrible, but for a couple of runs, these bearings are fine. In fact, they actually look more than fine, really or feel more than fine. They're not really that bad at all. I mean, anytime you open an engine that's been run a couple times, it's going to look kind of nasty in there, but these don't feel notchy. And they rotate fairly freely, so the few runs that I'm going to do, I'm not going to bother replacing bearings on this engine because it's not like I'm going to put this in a plane and go fly it for two years. Um, I may run it five, six times. These bearings will be fine for that. Um, the head, obviously, the compression is a problem. Uh, without compression, you're not going to have a running engine. So, we will definitely be addressing that. I wanted to try and just drop this piston in there again. My fingers aren't wanting to compress that. Right, there we go. Now, I feel I feel a lot more now. So maybe it's just that intake valve was just had a little bit of crud underneath it because this is, that's, I think you can tell that's quite a bit tighter than it was when it came out. So 
I don't know. And you heard the when I pulled that out. The valves have to be dropped, clearly. Um, could I just ultrasonic clean the head and hope I get enough off the valve stem? Yeah, maybe. But why, why do that when you can just drop the valve and do it right? So I'm going to shove this thing up in here. I'm going to turn the camera off and go and find my proper valve removal tools and continue this. But I wanted to share this video condition this engine with you and the fact that I'm still really excited right now because I think this is an A. Oh, well, I don't think it is. I know it is. It says it's a freaking A version. And to me, that tells me that there's a real high possibility that this engine dates back to 1994. And other than that, it looks pretty sound. Now, this carb is going to have to be taken apart and messed with uh, because the choke, the slider on the choke is bent. And I can tell by the way it feels and the way that it just wants to come out that there's some damage there. This velocity tube is, the mounting flange is damaged. It doesn't have that little Teflon sealing ring in there, whether that matters or not. All that means is that when this choke works properly and seals properly, you can actually prime the engine pretty well. Um, but I've never been successful in just covering, covering the intake and getting it to prime. So this would be one of those instances where for me to prime this engine, uh, I would have to just blow through the vent line on the tank and force fuel up in there. That's not a big deal, um, but I can probably see if I can, I'll have to take this apart. Let's just do it right now. Is that, that's not the right one. This is the right one here. Let's just pop this thing apart right now. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, shit. That's not good at all. The carb is broken. Oh, that's a real bitch. It does have the Teflon, but this chunk of the carb just was damaged and broke off. So, I don't know. I don't know. That won't really affect anything other than its ability to hold Venturi on there, but that is not a good thing at all. That really kind of blows. So, I don't know, maybe my friend Harvey's got a replacement car that I can buy off him for fairly inexpensive because now I'm not sure. Um, it's really just that. Carb will still mount. I can just take this thing off. I can run it without the velocity stack, I suppose. Or we can just attach it with one, one screw. I don't think that's going to be a huge, huge big deal. This thing needs to be, I can see what happened here. I don't know if you can see that or not, how that's kind of bent up. It looks like this was dropped, maybe, or something. Either way, that flange is broken out, and a new car for one of these is like three quarters of the price I paid for the engine, and it's like, eh, I'm not going to do that. So hopefully um, nothing else is wrong with this carb. Let's see here. If I close the needle valve all the way. This needs to go in the ultrasonic cleaner. There's some dried fuel residue in this so this carb's going to have to be completely disassembled uh, before it's going to be operational too. I'm not able to get any real airflow going through here with this needle valve completely open. See now see how it sounds completely different there was something that was obstructing that I expected to see something come flying out of there. Let's try this again. I think this one I might be able to get by with just dropping in the ultrasonic cleaner and 
uh, letting the vibration close, fully closed, high speed needle, no airflow. Throttle closed. Okay, so we got good seal here. And with the throttle closed, and this is open several turns, I'm not getting any airflow out. That's a good thing. All right. I think, I think just ultrasonic cleaning this, take the needle valve out, or the needle out and ultrasonic clean this thing this will be fine because I just made it so that it would operate right now so that's the status of this engine and uh, I can't tell you exactly when I'll have this engine running I ordered a prop for it I don't have the prop yet wait do I? No, I don't think the prop I ordered for it is in yet so anyway this has been a look inside of this new not new, new to me, Sato FA-150S that is an A version engine. So anyway, hope you learned something. Hope you look forward to running, seeing the run video because I'm looking forward to running this engine because there's nothing like running a 150. It's just really, really fun. So anyway, thank you all for watching.